materials and properties. Let's start off by talking about physical changes. A physical change that we're very familiar with is when water goes from ice to water and then to steam. These are physical changes and what you'll see is that the intermolecular uh, connection between the molecules is what's really changing. As a molecule slows down and stops vibrating as vigorously, it kind of locks into more regular orientation with the uh, relative charges uh, being a lot stronger and therefore it can create a solid. When we uh, add heat to ice and the molecules start vibrating and breaking these molecular bonds uh, uh, here and there, then we melt the ice and there's still some bonding but it's more haphazard and random and that's why water uh, molecules can move about each other and form a liquid. If we add more heat and further break these intermolecular bonds, then we break apart the water molecules because they're moving so fast that they don't have a chance to really tug uh, on each other uh, to uh, create intermolecular bonds and we call that steam. So in physical changes the compounds, notice the water molecules themselves are staying the same. Water is H2O and uh, but their intermolecular bonding is uh, changing. So those are physical changes. Next we can also have chemical changes. A chemical change is now where the compound or the molecules are actually going to uh, combine and in this case break apart from water and separate into hydrogen and oxygen. Water doesn't like to do that so we have to pump energy into water by driving electrical charges through it for example and if we do and we drive energy in uh, we can and at and uh, we can break these molecules apart and separate them into hydrogen and oxygen gas. So in chemical changes a compound can be broken apart like this or if we take the hydrogen gas uh, and put it in a balloon and then uh, light and burn the balloon so that the balloon opens up uh, and oxygen from the air is allowed to come in then wow there's a huge release of energy as the hydrogen molecules and the oxygen molecules get back together and form water again. So check out this huge release of energy. Three, two, one. Wow, that's quite a release of energy when the hydrogen and oxygen got back together to form these water molecules. So in summary, a chemical change, in chemical changes, compounds are either broken apart or put back together to form different compounds. So we talked briefly about physical and chemical changes. Now we can uh, look at some different physical and chemical properties. Physical properties are things like color, shape, size, density, the amount of a substance, and also volume, where chemical properties are flammability, rusting, burning, corrosion, and reactivity. So for the rest of this video, we're going to focus on physical properties because of bonding rather than chemical properties and how bonds break or, or join together. So chemical properties we'll leave for your chemistry class, but now let's we'll, we're going to concentrate on physical properties. In an earlier vid video, we talked about four types of bonds, uh, three uh, molecular types of bonds and then intermolecular bonding. And so these different types of bonds actually lead to different physical properties. So let's start by talking about ionic compounds with ionic bonds. Uh, the one we used before was uh, sodium chloride quite a bit, uh, regular salt. And remember, if you recall with ionic bonds, there's a strong electromagnetic attraction between uh, atoms and uh, creating very, very strong bonds. Now, this electrical force can extend in all different directions. So, so the sodium atom here can connect to chlorine atoms on all four sides, and same with the uh, chlorine. 
and it forms a nice crystalline structure because of those uh, electrical forces between the atoms. If you recall, these are the most like Lego clicks and that they click together firmly here on different sides. Because of that, these kind of molecules make really good regular solids here. And they break apart regularly too, so I can break them apart at their Lego co connections here, kind of shear in between. And that's why they have, that's why they form these nice regular crystals and can be broken into smaller regular crystals like these for sodium fluoride. Now notice with these tiny uh, uh, crystals, if you zoomed in, they would still be crystals. They'll be regularly shaped. And look at these beautiful crystals you get with magnesium oxide. So because of their ionic uh, bonds, uh, ionic compounds form crystals. They're very hard because of the strong electrical forces. They're very brittle because they can break uh, at these uh, regular sections here in the crystal. They have high melting points because they want to stick together electrically very, very, uh, they're very bonded strongly together electrically. They have high boiling points. They, when they jiggle, they jiggle quickly, but they stay close together. And they conduct electricity, but only when they're dissolved in water. So when you take this salt and you dissolve it in water, the sodium and chloride separate, and now they become ions in the water that can conduct electricity. So now for metals. If you recall with metal bonds, uh, each of the metals gave up electrons so that they could have uh, regular uh, quantum orbitals. But in doing so, they locked themselves into this electromagnetic uh, configuration. Now these electrons are free to move about, but they kind of create the glue in between. So it's really interesting in metals, if this atom is driven down by a force, so you hammer it and this is driven down, then this atom would move down and this one would move over. So you can actually form metals and then they'll reshape uh, after they're physically forced in a new position. They'll reshape because of these electromagnetic uh, connections between the electrons and, uh, and also these positive ions. So that gives them a very, some very unique properties. Uh, they're shiny, they're good conductors of heat and electricity, so because the electrons can move about readily, they can carry electricity easily. They have a high melting point. They're very strong electromagnetic forces in between, so they don't melt easily. They have high density. They're packed in very closely together because the electrons between them allow them to pack closely together, so they have high density. They're malleable, like I said, because when you force one, they kind of move over for each other, but they stay locked in, so they can be hammered into different uh, shapes. They're ductile. They can also be stretched into wires in different shapes, and they're usually solid at room temperature, except for mercury. It has some interesting uh, properties that make it a liquid at room temperature. Finally, we have our covalent bonds, which create covalent molecular compounds, such as methane, carbon dioxide, and water. If you recall, their bonds uh, weren't as strong as the ionic bonds or the metallic bonds, so they can break apart more easily. Um, and and uh, they also uh, have uh, covalent bonds, which are uh, polar covalent bonds, which means that they have some stick electrical stickiness on the various ends. And so that allows them to connect together to make even more complex molecules, such as this sugar molecule. So covalent molecular compounds have some very interesting properties. They have low boiling points. Again, their bonds aren't as strong, so they can be break on, broken apart. And often they end up in gases uh, because of that. Um, they don't stick together, uh, you know, too uh, vigorously. And they also have low melting points because of that. And various colors. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity, and uh, they usually make up brittle solids when they are in a solid state. The really awesome thing about covalent bonds, and especially polar covalent bonds, is they allow a uh, connection between uh, compounds such as water and oxygen and carbon dioxide to come together uh, with these 
uh, nonmetals and form larger molecules, in this case amino acids, and then amino acids can uh, build together, put, be put together to create DNA, and then DNA within cells is the coding with the mechanisms within the cells that can form and create proteins. Now proteins are held together by covalent bonds, but they're also formed in different irregular patterns because of intermolecular bonding as well. So through intermolecular bonding and covalent bonds, we can get these really complex molecules. Now these big protein molecules uh, within cells can turn around and produce other cells. And so then those cells uh, that are being produced can form tissues, and then tissues can form plants and animals and life. So it's through uh, covalent bonding and intermolecular bonding that we really do build all of living matter. So with ionic bonding, covalent bonding, metallic bonding, and intermolecular bonding, we really can build our entire fabulous and incredible and incredibly complex material world. So stop when you get a chance and look around this beautiful earth of ours and everything in it and realize that everything you're seeing is held together through molecular forces which are governed by this wonderful electrical force. And scratch his parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.